I know the feeling. You've just received your new e-bike and you're itching to get out there and start tearing up the trails. But before we start gathering up speed and putting on an awesome display, how about first we get you up to speed with this awesome display. This is the Cycle Analyst version 3.1, proudly made right here in Canada. It's a brilliant riding companion that will let you know exactly what's going on in terms of your bike's performance. It'll also help you get the best out of your e-bike at all times and allow you to tailor your ride so that your experience is everything you hoped it would be. The first thing to take note of is how the display is mounted on the bike. It's been fitted in such a way that it's not only incredibly secure, but it manages to stay in your line of sight and be easily accessible without being obtrusive or taking up too much of the handlebars real estate. But I know what you really want to see. So let's dive into the nitty gritty of this display, meaning the various menus and functions you're going to be using. On the main screen, you'll see a summary of your bike's battery level, as well as other indicators such as speed, power, voltage, and distance. Display screens two and three allow you to switch between electronic only information, such as your battery power, current, and amp hours or just the human power indicators like your pedal cadence and pedal power, if the torque sensor is installed. There are 12 display screens in total with a wealth of information where you can check out things like your peak stats, bike temperatures, regen percentage, and diagnostics. Cycling between the screens is easy enough, but to be honest, after you've played around with it for a while, you're probably going to have everything you need right there on the main screen most of the time. You may need to flick back and forth between one or two of the other screens now and again, but the foolproof design of the display keeps things super simple, utilizing only two buttons for its operation that can literally be figured out by anyone. There are many customization options, so you can display only the information that is relevant to you. Other screens can be hidden from view while in motion or stopped, and it's even possible to enable an automatic return to main display after a short time, without needing to manually navigate home. In the top right section of the main screen, by default, there's a customizable display field that toggles between your accumulated amp hours and the distance since your last trip reset. The display field can be configured to show other stats like motor temperature or instantaneous watt hour per kilometer. But a word of advice, you'll generally find the consumed amp hours to be amongst the most useful and important pieces of information on the display. That said, it is only useful if you remember to do a trip reset each time you recharge the battery pack. This can be done by holding down the right button until you see the message reset trip pop up on the screen. Press the right button again to select Y for yes, and this will ensure that the battery cycle statistics remain accurate. If you ever need to do some servicing on your bike, then it's useful to know the following. Connected to your display are cables for temperature sensor, e-brake, and an aux input. Then there's a cable for pass plug, one for TRS communications, plus there's a DC power tap, which can be used to get voltage from the battery but this is limited to one amp, and unless you have a specific use for it, you should just leave that protective rubber cap in place as you don't really want that tap being exposed. Then, finally, you've got this wire here that connects the display to your bike's controller or shunt. If you do decide to link the throttle to the display, you can set up speed limits and power limits using the Cycle Analyst display. You can access the options through the display's menus. Here you can set up a maximum assist speed, a minimum speed for power to work, and even a maximum speed that applies only when the rider is using throttle without pedaling. This throttle will have no power limiting. These limits can prove useful for complying with local e-bike regulations, especially if there are different limits for the maximum speed using motor assistance, or limits when pedaling versus using the throttle. Likewise, there are advantages to setting power limits such as reducing the stress on the battery cells for better battery cycle life, extending the maximum range you get on a charge, limiting the risk of a motor overheating, and reducing mechanical stress to drivetrains. You can choose to limit the power by setting a battery current limit in amps or power limit in watts. The main difference between the two is that amps limit will affect the power as the battery depletes and drops in voltage, while a watts limit remains constant throughout the battery's charge. Generally speaking, an amps limit is used more for protecting the battery pack and a watts limit protects the motor or mechanical drivetrain. If you're ever unsure of anything, please don't hesitate to contact the technical support team. We would be more than happy to help. 
We like to push the limits of what our bikes can do, and we've tested them extensively to make sure they're safe, yet still fun and enjoyable as they can be. For those of you who like to perform burnouts, first of all, you're people after my own heart. And second of all, in order for you to do it, you'll need to be disconnecting the front brake switch so that you can hold down the front brake while performing one. Something else that gets me amped up is the low voltage cutoff feature of the cycle analyst display. While lithium batteries have a battery monitoring system to prevent over discharge, the experience for the rider is an abrupt loss of power with no warning. Setting the low voltage cutoff one to two volts higher than the BMS shutoff voltage will result in a gradual reduction in power instead, with the added benefit that you'll get more amp hours and range of the battery too. Should you ever find that the cycle analyst is displaying a small positive or negative power when the motor isn't running, it means the amp's offset needs to be zeroed and recalibrated. To do this, press and hold the button on the zero amps setup routine. The actual output voltage shown on the screen from the two current sensing amplifiers should show around 2.5 volts for both. If the numbers differ greatly from this, there's likely to be a bad connection on either of the shunt sensing wires. Again, if you're ever unsure about the settings of your display, get in touch with us and we'll be happy to help you. Of course, you can do yourself a favor first and familiarize yourself with the Cycle Analyst Display Manual. There's a web page and YouTube videos for assistance too, but if you still run into problems, we've got your back. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit more informed, more confident, and more ready than ever to get out there now. So go ahead and enjoy the ride.